Hey, Corbin. Yeah. How many Mexicans does it take to change a light bulb? <laughs> how many? Do not say Juan. Just Juan. <laughs> Hey, welcome back to our stupid direct sub Corbin. Orale, vatos! You can follow us on Instagram, Twitter for more juicy content. Thank you to our Patreon. Follow us to the account. Subscribe the like button. Speaking of names. <laughs> who came up with Jesus? The Romans. Was it Constantine? That anglicized the pronunciation? Who, it's at some point, and I, I should know this. I used to teach this these kinds of subjects, but I'm, I am interested to know. When did Yeshua become anglicized? Who's responsible for that? The white people. <laughs> for sure. Uh, today we got a uh, two-parter uh, interview here with Mani Ratnam. Cool. And a couple other people. Read this. In this India Glyphs Tamil video, let's look into the world of Tamil cinema, where visionary, di visionary directors discuss about conviction. Join us as director Mani Ratnam sheds light on the invaluable contributions of K. Balichander, Bharati Raja, Mahandran, and Balu Mahandra who have left an incredible mark on Tamil cinema with their unique storytelling and creative brilliance. So they're talking about um, kind of... Contributors to yeah, Tamil, Tamil cinema. cinema. Forgive us if they will mention names that we're unfamiliar with or have forgotten that we're familiar with. But this is a... They didn't put everything in one, so it's a right. two-parter. Two okay, cool. Here, so here we go. Let's present CII Dakshin Summit 2023. Title sponsor GT Holidays and Anuj Tiles, powered by AF Stadium Jewelry Bars. Spin speed. It's like the beginning of a movie. I know. I want to go. I want to go fight Thanos. Adinama GT Holidays da. GT Holidays, South India's number one travel brand. Anuj Tiles. Rakandar Palavido. Ovvandru Mulagattara. Tamilaga Urupatil. Anuj Tiles. AF Star FE 550 DTMT. Wake me when it's over. AF Star TMT Steel Rebars. That was kind of like opening up a playbill at the Pasadena Playhouse. You get all the sponsors before you get to the actual credits. So we'd like to welcome you. Well, that was quick. This is for Pony and Selvin. I'd like to welcome Mr. Vetrimar. <laughs> <laughs> bum bum. Bum bum. Joseph creates his own universe and gave us a local... Hey, we know her back there. Oh, Basil Joseph. He was uh, the lead on yes. Jaya, in uh, Jaya yes. Jaya, and he's also directing Manal 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 yes. And uh, Chopra's back there, behind her. Mr. Shetty. Wow, this is quite the panel. Oh, uh, from... Uh, Whoa! Yeah. So he's Canada. They got a Malayali, they got a Tamil. Tell and me about conviction. Great Bobby panel. Said. Conviction, I think, I think. We were making a... This is a weird edit. Very, this is a very by South by Indian this edit. This film is accepted by the mainstream audiences. This <laughs> <laughs> for Roja. You are connected to the movie with the romance or the basic human emotions. You are connected. <laughs> So good. The filmmaker look for is and that I hope it's this win all the way through. Yeah! What a comment! Woo! The greatest! BTS. Uh, it's, what is BTS? It's a K-pop, Korean pop. <laughs> what is K-pop? That's like me. Me and Mani right here. What's BTS? The goats have assembled. Uh, so much more thank you. Thank you to... There's one guy up there they didn't introduce. Uh, who first invited me to be here. Um, Tell me about conviction, Mani, sir. Conviction, I think, I think... Bam, bam, bam. I can talk from my that experience. That was so from good. What I have grown through. I think we had, uh, we had some fantastic filmmakers before who paved the way for us. You know, there was, I mean, Balachandra was there, Bharati Raja was there, Balamahindra was there, Mahindran was there. I think 
they broke ground and they laid a path and the thing distinct about tamil was that all the good filmmakers were making films within the mainstream and uh, not necessarily very parallel so there is always sensibility that had been ingrained into mainstream cinema mm. and that helped us there is kannada i think kannada and malayalam had very distinct I and mean, there was girish kasravelli girish karnan they were very fantastic filmmakers you know gvi there was enough of them but and it took a while before that sensibility got into mainstream film right whereas here we had the advantage of people like uh, you know <clears throat> balchandar to make this way and that gives the every younger person a conviction i think today if a lot of youngsters are making tamil films i think uh, we all owe it to them vetri where do you find conviction as a storyteller um, i would like to add on to the point that manisar made about i, I didn't see them introduce him sorry i need to know who he is uh, we don't have a parallel movement as such every other language in uh, india has it we only is have that, the mainstream is that true tamil doesn't have a, a uh, parallel films so whatever films that are made it has to be made for the mainstream audiences we need to address even the most serious of ideas and thoughts that we need to put uh, which we want to tell us stories film stories are okay uh, ha- it has to be catered to the mainstream audiences that has given every filmmaker a bigger challenge or uh, tamil tamil filmmakers a bigger challenge which is what kind of compromises are you ready to make when you're making a serious film your compromises are lesser uh, and when you when you're trying to make a mainstream film you need to take the audience into account uh, in the process what has happened is we have started making films with whatever we want only to the mainstream He's and the tamil Tamil mainstream director. audiences have evolved i uh, when i when we were making uh, visaranai i used to tell my team if this film is accepted by the mainstream audiences i would i would say that the tamil audiences are the most evolved mainstream audiences and they did make that film a profitable film so i feel i i feel as tamil filmmakers we are uh, gifted to be in this position where the audiences are open and we are challenged as creative people to work only within the mainstream uh, framework when it, uh when when you was saying conviction i i actually don't understand what you mean by the word conviction but i, I mean i'm got to ask me too you're saying that the same courage thought. we have to tell the stories it is the courage you. to to make yeah. all the films all four yeah. of you have made films yeah. that require courage yes so i i think it comes from our sincerity to tell a story for our own people not taking into consideration anything beyond that mm. and we all have a uh, being true a, to yourself a, a mathematical yeah. balance i would say in terms of commerce uh, mani sir uh, was the first person to do something like you know uh, taking a newcomer and liberating himself from the star pressure and coming up with a film like roja mm. he was telling a story for himself like you know it's a small story but it had an international appeal bombay for that matter also so we want to tell stories again uh, when i say we i would <laughs> so it's uh, i'm assuming that i'm assuming that so uh, all of us want to tell stories from our own world and if it connects internationally it's fine where when when i want to tell a story which connects to the whole world i might end up making certain compromises that that might not work for the tamil audience people whom i am making the film for or from mm. from whom i am making the film from so i think that we all are all of us are on on the dot i think with this you know i i have to say that you know when you talk about roja people talk about pan indian now roja was pan india 30 years ago <laughs> right i used to work at india today magazine and every day we would take a 15 minute break to listen to the soundtrack <laughs> we would all just stop working because choti si aasha we had to listen to at least once but let's talk about <laughs> these compromises so rishab 
you've always told me this ki local is universal mm. right when you made minal morli um, basil when you were making it did you not like petri say ever think ki audience bahar kya hogi ya um, if i do this change maybe it will cross borders you don't think of that at all uh as well uh... I have a language issue, so I can't speak in English. So do I, Rishav. I can't speak Tamil, Kannada. Uh, I can speak Tamil, Kannada, uh, Hindi. <laughs> okay. You and I will talk Hindi. Hindi. Uh, uh, what about Hindi? Hindi is good. <laughs> For about to ten people. Hello, dear. Bad accent, sir. Kannada and Tamil. See. Oh, too bad they didn't have a translator. Uh, so that is an issue. Uh, मुझे वो इंग्लिश नहीं आता है तो मैं इंग्लिश फिल्म नहीं देखता हूँ तो इट्स अ गुड थिंग तो अच्छा यू आर आई ऑलवेज सीन इंडियन सिनेमा कनाडा सिनेमा तमिल हिंदी तेलुगु मलयालम सो वैसे मैं एक बिलो एवरेज स्टूडेंट था ज्यादा पढ़ता भी नहीं हूँ सो माय इंस्पिरेशन मेरा गांव का कहानी सो वॉट हैव सीन इन माई विलेज Uh, and moreover, I always, uh, uh, I always a, a fan boy or an audience. So, me ek audience jaisa dekhta hu. So, agar me ek audience hu, so mujhe acha lagna chahiye mera kahani. So, uh, isliye me sochta ki mera gaon ka kahani, to jo rooted stories hai, wo jada reach hota hai kyunki abhi uh, kanta raho, to usa uh, ek rituals. वजह एक कहानी जो हर गांव में रहता है तो अगर हम साउथ केनरा में और हमारा कर्नाटक में मैंगलोर में हम लोग गुड़ी का दैव कहते हैं तो इंगे तमिलनाडु में कावल दैव मन सो लोगे सो दिस काइंड ऑफ अ कनेक्शन पूरे इंडिया में है सर शायद आप बाहर देखा तो आप अगर आप वाइकिंग्स देखा तो उधर का भी जो रिचुअल्स दिखाता है वाइकिंग्स में तो इट्स मोर कनेक्टेड टू इंडियन जो रिचुअल्स हम लोग करते हैं तो वो है तो आई ऑलवेज फेल्ट तो ये कहानी तो हर लोगों को कनेक्ट हो जाएगा तो हमको जो ज्यादा इन्फ्लुएंस नहीं होना चाहिए अगर मैं ये कनेक्ट होता है करके मैं एक वेस्टर्न फिल्म जैसा करना और हिंदी फिल्म जैसा करना वो ज्यादा डिसकनेक्ट हो जाएंगे लोग तो इसलिए इट शुड बी वेरी core very regional mm-hmm. very rooted i think i understood most of what he was saying actually sahi lagega logon ko so mera conviction hai that so tell me about the pressure of success then basil you made minal murli which was massive success all of us were rooting for this home grown superhero now you're making another film does that put pressure on you to think about audiences like us who are not malayalam speaking definitely it's a actually it's a pressure actually to make a to meet the expectations coming from with the next movie but uh, all i have to connect to that to the conviction we have not compromising on the uh, our own, our own sensibility to make it more global or more wider or more pan indian as we call it today uh, we just have to be true to your, our movie we have to be true to our emotions that that's so it have been working for all along all the way like for sure Manipur, that's exactly how rajmuli has responded to those questions yeah the romance or the basic human emotions you are connected that's global I'm that's gonna make it yeah i'm going to make it for us if yeah, you I'm like it great it's and a lot of it this side and i has universal that. truth yeah. that'll resonate it's, the emotion is the universal and you have there you go yeah complete. you have to be personal everybody's a human everybody has emotions right so following some template or something like that so i think uh, there is a pressure for uh, doing a next film for sure but definitely if we are true to the genre we, if we are true to our emotions it is personal and then uh, and if the storytelling <clears throat> can uh, translate uh, it's not just about making route to everything it won't work beyond borders maybe the translation have to be also <clears throat> intact maybe uh, like korean industries have been doing for so long like they have been doing that storytelling is translating to the global audience even they are they are all making their own culture they are on yep. mm-hmm. myths or their own rooted stories it's connecting to the global audience so i think that's all matters uh, we have to translate it 
cleverly maybe with, with proper storytelling but true to the emotions it mm. should come from the heart yep. but little bit of maybe a brain as well <laughs> do you take the pressure of the box office now that you're all so widely successful um when you're writing when you're creating the next one is there a number because now we're all talking about a thousand crores hai na that's the conversation now which film is now hit a thousand jawan how do you as an artist <laughs> protect yourself from that don't read the numbers leave it the leave that to the producers and distributors yeah do you hear that twitter <laughs> i think all that you as a filmmaker look for is that this film should do well enough for me to get another chance yes for me to do one more film. which is why you support good films by giving them your box office film. money and I that's like what it matters to do well which means my story gets told to some right, people right right the numbers become an additional thing you know it is not the main thing preach it money hear the applause the story and <laughs> we should be able to make more and more movies yes it, it, it doesn't, doesn't mean if a movie makes money more, that it's, that it's a, a good, good movie faster <laughs> many more Guys, but good movies just, ought to make money because the producers will make more of them. Um, no, uh, I. Um, okay, let me put it this way: my films are not uh, really, really big success. Uh, like you know, the, not really the bigger box office stuff. Um, I would always wish when I start a film, I would always wish and plan to. have a, a break even on table on the day of the release for my producer anything over and above that i'm happy right that. If, yeah if that doesn't happen on paper i wouldn't want to start a film if i can't see that except for this little yeah little you want your producers to get their money back at, at least yeah bare minimum budget don't lose uh, money we did not intend to spend so much but we had to spend that kind of money but otherwise if the producer breaks even i'm very happy yes and uh, I take only that much calculation into mind, and uh, as Manizar said, um, he directed that movie we haven't seen. It. it came out a couple months ago. You are Vijay Sethupathi is in it as, as a supporting as role, and it's mm. kind of a village thing, mm. so, behind uh, the scenes way, of a multiple thing. He's the director we get of that. Opportunity We're gonna watch to it. I haven't seen do it. Do better. So I look at. I mean, I take yes. only that much into account. Any producer would produce mm. again you know, uh, as long as they don't lose money. Yep. Uh, Oscar winning. screenwriter William Goldman once said and very famously said about the movie business <laughs> that nobody knows anything right <laughs> Orson Welles said that I too in post pandemic something like it even more true because genuinely nobody knows nope. has any clue but at least in in mumbai what i hear a lot ki prevailing wisdom is that now audience will come for spectacle for song for stars anything that's Made or smaller budget, anything that's more personal. Because in Mumbai, they care about box office above all. Has to go to streaming. <laughs> I, is this true? Like, do you guys think about what do people want to see in theaters? That is the most uh, most difficult one, because uh, we can't predict. Before Kantara, I have done a. a they had no idea Kantara was going to make what it made, which is a children's film. So you are asking about the numbers before this. तो मैं वो फिल्म 1.4 करोड़ में फिल्म किया था मेरे पापा से कुछ मीडिया वाले जाके पूछा है कि आपका बेटा ऐसा एक्सपेरिमेंट कर रहा था वो एक्सपेरिमेंट नहीं कर रहा था उसके पास पैसा नहीं था इसलिए ऐसा फिल्म किया करके ठीक है लेकिन वो फिल्म 20 करोड़ तक बॉक्स ऑफिस कलेक्शन था मैं सोचा इस बार मैं एक बहुत बड़ा बजट का फिल्म कर देता हूँ तो वो कांता रहा लेकिन वो फिल्म रिलीज होने के बाद वो एक सेल्फ मेड पैन इंडिया हो गया मैं वही बैटरी सर से बात कर रहा था सो so, खुद पैन इंडिया बनके वो रिलीज हो गया मैं बाके पीछे पीछे गया सीधा बाद में सोचा ये एक लोएस्ट बजट पैन इंडियन फिल्म है इसलिए ऑडियंस को क्या वर्क होता है तो क्या नहीं क्या वर्क नहीं होता है तो ये सोच नहीं सकते हम लोग अगर ये कहानी मुझे अच्छा एक किक दे रहा है मुझे मुझे पसंद हो रहा है मुझे एक थ्रिल दे रहा है तो ये मैं एग्जीक्यूट करना चाहिए तो एक पूरे मन से हम लोग पूरे एफर्ट डाल के करते हैं तो वो शायद एक ट्रू एफर्ट किया तो वो लोगों को भी कनेक्ट होता है सो नो वन ट्राइंग टू सेकंड गेस द ऑडियंस बेसल वुड यू से यस एक्चुअली लाइक यू हैव सेड वी कैन नॉट प्रेडिक्ट एनीथिंग राइट नाउ बिकॉज़ पीपल 
change the taste, the trends change for sure. Like mm -hmm. just before COVID, people were more driven to content oriented film mm -hmm. or, or realistic movies back then. And then now, since the onset of KGF or Kandara or Ahuvali, like big movies, people maybe want uh, to come to theater for big spectacles rather than, rather than for content driven, like small scale realistic movies. So, but at the same time, small scale comedy movies are working out somewhere, like even very low budget small movies are working out and some uh, even drama is also working out sometimes. But it's it's not predictable at all. But all I have to say is like <laughs> just updated with our own, like stay updated, upskilling is something which is very important, I think. Like in the past when we used to listen to Air Roman or Ilay Raja songs, the kids these days are listening to BTS or Blackpink. So we have to stay along with the generation and the they're listening to ani so and you know it some, some <laughs> we have to. then from that perspective when we make movies it might connect with the audience or the people who, who are along with the trend actually I, so I, I don't think there is any framework for uh, the trends or anything like that bts uh, it's, what is bts it's a k pop korean pop music okay. bts okay <laughs> <laughs> So there's another part, there's another part. Is there anything you wanted to say in between that? Any, any no, we have a second part. We have a second part. Yeah, I don't yeah. know if there's anything you wanted to say in between that, though. No, well, the only uh, thing I wanted to point out, I took a note, that's why I got my phone, was that you hear this consistently within Indian cinema all over the place, the difference between mainstream and parallel, which in the States, you most of you probably already know this, for us, that would be synonymous with, say, independent and studio, yeah. as far as the focus on, one of them is more focused on artistry and the other one's more focused on technically making a lot of money technically a24 is technically independent film yeah even though they're they're bordering now on they're just too big now to yeah. be considered independent <laughs> like right they, they have too much money right basically <laughs> at a certain point but thankfully you, if, they're not a member of the amptp so yeah. stay that way that's why they made an ex a couple exceptions yeah 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 a24 which yeah, i don't yeah. think they're doing anymore um but here we go for the second part great you know what film I'm talking about? I do know what okay. you were referring to. Yeah. yeah. Cool. I just wanted to make sure. 2023. Titans sponsor, GT Holiday. Summit 2023. Tamil. Make a film. You're skipping the big intro stuff? Yes. Yeah. It's just It's a K pop, Korean pop music. BTS. Themselves Bollywood. <laughs> I have to bring you in okay. because right. two minutes of 40 that years. Stuff. How do you do that? Yeah. What are the names you said? Uh, other than Rehman and <laughs> <laughs> No, no. I want to learn. I want to keep updated. <laughs> BTS. Uh, it's, what is BTS? It's a K pop, Korean pop music. Oh, I've never listened to one okay. BTS I'm song. So. You don't know one yeah. BTS, BTS song? I'm sure I've heard it. Like, yeah. Oh, my stars, no, they're so I good. Kids this, this love that. The songs are great. Their music videos no, are great. They're talented you? guys. <laughs> Alexis adores them. <laughs> Seen them in concert. Discussions you just yeah, ask. Especially when you ask them. <laughs> yeah, BTS is great. Genuinely, sir. Seriously, sir. 40 years of money, Ratnam, ladies and That's not what I thought she was going to say. I heard, fuck. It's unbelievable. It's uh, and the thing is, you still speak to us with that same passion, with that same sincerity. When I go into PS One, uh, I'm swept away like I was when I saw Roja or Bombay or Nigra. How is it that you never just sit home and rest and say, "Today I'll just pat myself on my laurels and be happy"? What keeps pat you striving? On my laurels. What makes never you heard that thing. Don't do it. <laughs> pat myself on my laurels. <laughs> yeah. Rest on your laurels. Pat so myself on the back. Chat. <laughs> <laughs> but you still want to do the next film, and when you want to do a next film, it is. I don't know why, but it's always like a first film. You really, when you start off, at least for me, when I start off, I have no clue how I'm going to do it. If I have a scene on hand when you start a new film and a new scene, I don't know how to shoot it. So you have to go in, discover, and then get into a rhythm and then keep building. But it it never lets you become confident. To be very honest, when I did my first film, it was a Kannada film. And uh, I didn't know filmmaking. I didn't know Kannada. I'd written a script and I thought I could make it. I just convinced. I told the actor that I have a producer. I told the producer I have an actor. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> and when I was making the film, I had two choices. I could work as an assistant director and become a director later. But I thought seven years, I'm not ready to work as an assistant. I've done my post-graduation. I've worked for two years enough. The other option was to write a script and convince. So I went the other way. I thought to myself, told myself that if I write a script, you know, convince a director, you no, know, uh, any of the big directors to take the script and then with him I'll work on one film and learn filmmaking. That's what my plan was. But when I finished the script, I thought I'll do it myself. And um, so I told myself that this one film, I'll learn everything. I'll fall, I'll get up, I'll learn everything and then let them see who I am. <laughs> but that never happens, you know. I mean, you never really learn it fully. You're still struggling and they still, you're always in awe of uh, masters. You know, when I see Vetri's film or when I see these, Kantara, no, I mean, they're, they're just fantastic. It just inspires you that the limit is up there, far, far above. So it pushes you. Okay. And for that Kantara, you are the inspiration, sir. <laughs> <laughs> tell them, tell them. <laughs> <laughs> so we can make films like uh, OK Kanmani and uh, Ponyan Sinhal also. So that is an inspiration that uh, as a filmmaker, as a storyteller, we should break the genres. So we should explore different, different contents. So he's the inspiration. Veggie, how does that feel when Manisa calls you a master? I, I, I really um, feel really embarrassed uh, when he says such things. I feel that he's very, um, he likes to encourage youngsters and he's, he's, he's encouraging. So I look at it that way only. And uh, about, I'll, I'll first say about this uh, pandemic stuff. I think before, even before the pandemic, the trend of going in spectac to watch spectacles on screen set in India with the advent of OTT popularity. When a lot of films start, like, you know, when OTT swept into the uh, mainstream viewing uh, thought process, we wanted to watch spectacles and when yeah, that's not the lockdown new. came in, it cemented itself. But again, it's not just the visual spectacle, but an emotional immersion. That is, I feel when you are sitting inside a theater, if you can hold the audience or if he feels that he cannot, he, he, he doesn't need to go to his mobile phone to get a new shot of one, one, one fresh shot of uh, uh, dopamine. Uh, dopamine. dopamine yeah. One new fresh shot of dopamine through the phone. Then he will come to the theater and sit. I think uh, there are some very nice examples in Tamil now. Very small films like Love Today was a very small film. And the kind of... Uh, uh, see, uh, when, we, when we are talking about watchability on uh, in coming into the big screen and watching, like we talk about all the big films, uh, the, the pan-India films and uh, even small films, the how, how you uh, accept the film or respect the film or whatever opinion you have about the film, irrespective of that, we talk about how people come in and take the film. So a, a small film like Love Today is accepted as much as a, a big triple uh, R or KGF is accepted. So I think the immersive experience and the em emotional connect. There's some point where uh, I can identify with the world that is being built and the issues that are being discussed. Mm -hmm. uh, if, it's a, if it's my problem, a modern day issue, then I go to theatre irrespective of the size of the film in terms of budget. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, if there is something that I can feel proud of, I'm going to feel proud of... Uh, I mean, every... Every... Every person in Tamil Nadu is proud of Ponyan Silvan. Mm. Very, very proud of Ponyan Silvan. For that matter, when, when uh, Vikram came also, Vikram came also, we were like feeling like... Okay, so we, Tamil film industry has an answer to the pan-Indian uh, syndrome or pan-Indian thing. Though we will celebrate the film. So that kind of, if, if that pride 
works that also is a matter of connecting factor mm. <clears throat> mani sir i feel he has been an inspiration for i think a guy in the 10th grade now who wants to become a filmmaker i watched uh, i did not have the opportunity to watch nayagan in theaters when it got released but i had a, a vhs uh, tape at home so i watched that film for 47 times <laughs> i want to wow. become a filmmaker Dang. to do a film as good as nayagan or better than nayagan so i was when i was 15 i watched the film and i came uh, wanted to become a filmmaker today a 15 year old guy will wa- guy or girl will watch ponin selvan and will want to become a filmmaker mm. so that is the kind of influence and impact mani sir has <laughs> so so whatever whatever you say whatever you do uh one name has been a constant in tamil cinema like what sachin tendulkar was for uh, huh. indian <laughs> good comparison that name like that name for tamil cinema and for indian cinema also yeah i like manish's courage his courage to go up and make a film like see whether you like it or not that's not a problem for me okay you don't like it i will wake up in the morning tomorrow and i will start a fresh that courage not anybody uh, or not everybody is as courageous as mani sir is to be constantly making films these 40 years are not just his ability to connect with his stories to the people but his courage and commitment to make films continuously i i think that is what we all should learn from mani sir that courage thank you for that sir thank you you know i want to also touch briefly about something that i think about a lot because with the emergence of the big spectacle movies right with with the success of let's say pushpa or the kgf films or rrr uh, there's also a sort of return in a way of the larger than life very hyper masculine hero i feel women in film have made great leaps in the last 15 years you know in front of the camera behind the camera we have so many more women directors now and i am afraid as a lover of cinema as as a film critic that somewhere we will take three steps back because again at least in mumbai the general idea is ki the female led film is mid budget it's a little you know it's more personal choti film hai go to ott how do we stop that from happening because like you said it's not about budget it's about emotion it's about how much you are immersed in a narrative how do we make sure since you are the goats that women are not pushed to the sidelines again who oh, not only a uh, uh, women filmmaker so that will happen for low budget filmmakers sabko hota hai wo sab, sab. Yeah. so uh, aapko ek bada film hit ho gaya to sirf log wo hit film ke liye dekhte hain agar <clears throat> ek mid budget ka hai to wo small screen ke liye sahi hai wo actually audience ka bhi preference ho raha hai abhi to agar chota film ho gaya to hum log ott pe dekhte hain to utna buzz create hua to theater aate hain log so uh, i think wo pandemic ke baad ek revolution hua hai to waisa to abhi battery sir uh, low today ke bare mein bata rahe the to made in a small budget so utna zyada publicity bhi nahi hai release hone ke baad itna bada film ho jayega wo kabhi kabhi hota hai us kabhi can predict we can only hope yeah yeah uh, yeah it's it's working sir i should say that this trend has been regressive in terms of uh, women uh, representation that that has happened and uh, we we should really look into it take it seriously in terms of representation at the same time i think uh, women making films uh, should speak more boldly about their own uh, uh, they should come out to tell their own stories in a more bolder way Agreed. i would say and uh, number of more number of uh, women filmmakers should come one of my assistants and women producers yeah uh, 
let us tell our own stories please mm-hmm. don't try to give us representation she said uh-huh. so, yeah so let the women tell so, their stories and let uh, them produce I, it i think that should uh, that's what happened with barbie and uh, this regressive approach of, of portraying women should definitely mm-hmm. change in in the bigger films bigger films uh, where it is more evidently regressive Well, making a note to myself about women for jaya 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 hey which was one of my uh, favorite films uh, you got beat up agreed. a lot but it was fantastic <laughs> great talk film talk about female led oh, films we'll make uh, male film malayalam women nahi kiye correct so <laughs> nahi nahi we can't we can't be prescriptive ki only women can tell you know everybody i'm just saying largely speaking i hope we can you know we can kind of keep pushing on this front um I've just been told I have seven minutes to end, so I have one one last. She's question. such a good interviewer. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, for too many years now, when we speak about Hindi cinema or Bollywood, it becomes that's Indian cinema, right? Through his Oscar campaign, um, Raju Mali kept saying, "This is not a Bollywood film." Mm-hmm. RRR is yeah. Like yeah. Everybody it. was calling it a Bollywood film. Do you see in the next year in the next two years that that has shifted and will continue to shift where the four industries of the south <clears throat> and hindi cinema are now the new national cinema yeah, i have to share my personal experience uh, adikalam was in uh, um a festival um i'll just get the name okay uh, it was in a festival and uh, Uh, a canadian uh, actress she was uh, she she was invited for the film she came and uh, she asked uh, is this a hindi language film i said no no it's a tamil film very educated But question why is an indian sp- film speaking in tamil shouldn't a sri lankan film be speaking in tamil i said no 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 in, in, in india has to a lot of yeah, languages it's ignorance and yeah tamil is one language she said oh i thought india speaks only hindi no oh wow that's, 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 yeah, that's, that's very thing. common and uh, yep as long as this uh, this narrative is strongly built but see they have bought that idea and uh, i Just i don't out of ignorance like, it's uh, very uncommon for uh, one country uh, to speak so many space, languages hollywood hollywood tollywood Hollywood, all woods. I don't like the it. French <laughs> speak French. <laughs> yeah. The English I speak yeah. English. The Spanish like speak that. Spanish. So yep. Cinema, it's, it's very it's very different in India. It's uh, uh, strong stars and the market and the business. So they've reached that way. And uh, with films, uh, RRR was called uh, was supposed to be a biggest collector in uh, the US. equal to all the hollywood films also when such films come and the discussion starts around it there might be people who are aware of it but then most people are not bothered about what language we speak like i'm talking about them so what language we we speak they are content with their own misinformation so only when they put in some effort to change that it will change we can't be like you know going and screaming about uh, uh, who, who what kind of films we make who we are and all of that they word of mouth just everybody. keep spreading the they word a lot of it is just ignorance they want to learn let them most countries don't have hundreds of languages it's just ignorance if hindi films stop calling themselves bollywood i think it will change you know I think yeah, because you know, internally, image, we've been told Hollywood. none of them like that, that term. Yeah. They keep it because it's monetarily it's successful for them to keep that term. Bollywood of all the things. This is true, and and I have to say, I have some part. All of us media people have some part of it. No, it's your fault. <laughs> as Bollywood, uh, I want to just end with with something that uh, I read somewhere that Kamal Hassan sir saw Pony and Selvan one. and he said that I hope so he voiced this it this is the golden age of tamil cinema and mm-hmm. as a tamil artist as a tamil filmmaker he was very proud mm. uh, so i want to see be. that line and say i think this is the golden age of south indian cinema mm. and as an indian critic and an indian i don't viewer, disagree with I'm that statement proud. so thank you goats <laughs> I think it is a golden age of Indian cinema. Indian cinema. <laughs> so finally, we we all. <laughs> yes. 
can't wait to see everything all of you make next. And thank you for the time. And thank you, CIA, for the opportunity. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Great, great, thank you. great interview. Great, great panel as always. Yeah. Uh, I would love to. I think I, I picked up on a lot of what. Um, um, the, Basil Joseph? No, not Basil. He's the one on the end. Uh, this is Basil Joseph. Oh, 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 uh, sorry. Cantata yeah, Cantata, yeah. And I think he was the director as well. Can correct me if I'm... Oh, Shetty. Yes. Uh, Rishab Shetty. Uh, I think I picked up on a lot of what he was conveying. Obviously, we didn't have subs for, for yeah. him. Uh, which, apparently, we were kind of like a lot of the audience, because apparently a right. lot of them don't speak Right, Exactly, well, so. don't speak Hindi. Um, but it's it's always good to... It was an in-depth discussion about a lot of the current goings-on. Great of, questions. Of Indian cinema, specifically South Indian cinema, because they're all South Indian directors. Um, and it was, it was, it was, I'd say, um, Mani is kind of, he's a different style of film. Like, he's like the Steven Spielberg yeah. of Indian cinema. Who Steven, loves history. Yeah. Yeah. He's, he's different than Steven because Steven, I think, does a lot more commercial, uh, style films a lot. Mm -hmm. Um, but, but I, a I, lover, a lover of love, things historic. Um, for sure. Mani, I feel like, is more not a, a, even though his films are commercially successful i feel like they're not as big and commercial as like obviously jurassic park et obviously all those no. dumb things yeah um but i feel like in terms of like his clout or his respect amongst people and his the amount of people he's inspired all around yeah India, yeah uh he he is he is that of indian cinema yeah i agree yeah and i one of the the differences i see consistently between all of the south industries versus the hindi industry is that the South industries, and it was evidenced here in the panel, s consistently talk about tell your story, focus on story, box office as immaterial other than let my producers not lose a penny and let's ensure we have enough money to make another film we want to make. Consistently what I hear in Hindi from everyone in the industry is box office is king. Mm -hmm. It's the most important thing. The other thing uh, I... I heard, and it's interesting that while, yes, post-pandemic, the things that have made the most money are the juggernauts and the big uh, sensational films. Especially films, in right? India. Yeah. But this isn't a new thing. Uh, the idea of a blockbuster and epic film began with Jaws. Yeah, but and, the fact and, that... I mean, there were a few films a while ago internationally. You know, I think everybody may have forgotten these Avenger films. Those were quite big spectacles that did really well I at the box office. the fact that post-pandemic, um, well, I guess after the essential pandemic, right? Um, the stuff that did work before, like all the... the um, the the kind of yes. Ayushman style films, right? Yes. In terms of they have a message. Yes. Didn't or at least haven't worked until more recently uh, at the box office. But I, I think there's a multi factor to that. The first yeah. one is the fear of getting back into the theaters and needing to yeah. be drawn for Absolutely. something that's big. Secondarily, a lot of the films that would fall into the say the parallel side or the more artsy side come against something in India that they don't come against here in America or a lot of the Western film industries, mm -hmm. and that's the censorship board. Yeah, they just inherently go OTT because the, one of two reasons. They think, well, folks are a little bit hesitant to come to the theater unless it's a big thing because a lot of the folks are still a little uncomfortable coming out into the public. That's That's gone away. But the larger issue is, especially for people who are writing things predominantly for artistry, is... Is my film going to get chopped up so much that I am going to need to release it on OTT? The last thing I wanted to mention, and she asked a great question, was about women and the way that they're represented. Mm. One of the challenges, not just in India, but in all over the world, is that particularly when you're telling stories from history, the sad reality is if you wanted to tell a movie, for example, about any of the presidents of the United States, none of them were women. If you're going to tell a story about any of the teams who battled in professional sports in America and won the World Series or won the Super Bowl or won the NBA title or won the Stanley Cup, it's all men. Mm. If you're going to tell stories about people who did heroic things in World War II or the Korean War and were on the front lines, it was all men. So the ones who would know those stories better than anybody are women mm. who say, you know what, there's a lot of stories about women that need to be told or we're just going to create something that's of a fiction and let them helm it. And the big problem is not a lot of men want to produce that. You need more Margot Robbie's and mm -hmm. and more Greta Gerwig's who are willing to produce the things they want to make. Absolutely. Yeah. Because yeah, the, obviously the women actors, directors have been there always. Uh, yeah. It's just they 
they don't get the voice. But thankfully, you do have names now that have the voices like the Zoyas, who, yeah. you know, not only is going to get the money, but she's going to maintain Multiple creative Zoyas. control. Yeah, Multiple just du 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 duplicate that over and over <laughs> again. Uh, a, a, another one that's doing great work and uh, production producing a um, Anushka Sharma. Anushka Sharma. That's who uh, I was just going to say. Is a Anushka is a great producer. producer. Uh, always love whatever she but produces it, as well. It, but we've just all mentioned names that are in the Hindi industry. Yep. We we need to know some of the names in the South industry as quickly that are are creating stories and producing films well, that like, are women. Uh, the um, Bengali uh, thing we just saw. Um, she is um, Konkana's mother. Yes. Uh, um, she's still around, and I believe yes. she's producing. I believe her that own work. As you well. are correct. Um, that would be Bengali industry or Hindi. I don't know yeah. what she does yeah. predominantly, but um, all these, like in terms of like the box office success that that he had in Kantara, that and I think I think you can correct me if I'm wrong. I think he said I had the smallest budget pan India film ever. Yeah, yeah. Um, which because of the success that that film had, uh, the Canada film industry is just in terms of box office alone. Is that, yeah, just it, an insane. It, 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 it very much reminds me of something I'm going to be talking about. T tomorrow I'm starting a 30 minute thing on my YouTube channel live called For the Love of the Craft and I'm going to be specifically referring to a comment, a long comment someone made that is related to AI but it's also related to some of the things that differentiate motivations of filmmakers that were talked about here. Yeah. And uh, I, Corbin and I will always, there, if you want to just go do something to make money, that's your prerogative. Go do it to make money. Mm -hmm. When it comes into the realm of art form, it it always speaks to the more, if I can coin the word elevative, the higher level humanity, meaning I'm talking about the humanities, to to be creating something. Humanities? Yes, the, hum, the humanities. To be creating something for the, the purpose of artistic expression and fine artistry, and then you hope you're able to recoup cost. And if you make a profit, that's even better because then you can take that profit and make something else again. But that's not the arbiter. And if there's somebody in the Hindi industry who can tell you that, it's Anurag Kashyap. Mm. Uh, he's a great example of somebody who, he makes films because he wants to make films. He's, yeah. he's not making films because he's looking for those to be big box office. Yeah, I think he actually has mostly box the office. The biggest failures, failures of all time. I yeah. Think most of his and some of the is. greatest motion pictures made in Indian cinema. So, Great interviews. Great um, panel. That was fun. That that 40 minutes of part one and two went really, really quick. He's, okay. So this is the film that, that I was talking about. Yeah. Um, which a lot of people really enjoy. Say it's one of the better films of the year. We're, we're going to get to it. I just haven't yet. He's a producer on Jolly Taku. Uh, oh, he directed a shoe run. Okay, mm. so we've seen that. Okay. Director of Vada Chennai. Oh, I didn't know he was part of the producer for uh, Jalikatu. Yeah. Uh, I'm trying to see if there's... Oh, why do I know that? Why do I know that? Um... One of the things, though, another point on the women, one of the things that all of the men can do in those industries who have power, like Amani Ratnam or anybody on that panel, one of the things they can do is give power to women that they know ought to be yeah. in positions of power. Because far too often there are, like they said, a lot of women out there, but sadly they won't be given the positions of power because the men are withholding it. Yeah. Um... And I feel like the Mali Alam industry does actually a very good job because they have, we've always said, always have focused, at least in our eyes, more on the content than anything. Yeah. Um, that's, it's very evident in their work. And they also don't have a lot of the mass success mm -hmm. in terms of like, which is crazy because I think they've made some of the best films we've seen out of India. They really have. Um, but in terms of like the pan-India success. They haven't had as much as the other industries. Of no. The Hindi or the Tamil or Telugu, Canada now, obviously. Um, and I know... Uh, Not yet. Yeah. I know. Yeah. I think per, we saw an interview with Pravathi, was it, that said this? He said, we're, we're going to get In it. In a panel, yeah. yeah and he I, did. He's like, I have, I have no doubt that we're going to get it. Absolutely. Um, and I think with the success that Malayalam has and the fact that everybody now knows that that industry makes great stories. And like, the fact that... The Battle of Bras wasn't like one of the biggest films, Pan India right. successes right. of the years. <laughs> Insane to me. Uh, or Jaya Jaya Jaya. Hey, you know, I know, like, in, especially in Kerala, very successful, all of them. But um, the fact that they're not like these Pan India successes. Yeah. Uh, with such great stories, great acting, great, um, in, just entertaining films. Yeah. Uh, but they're, I feel like they're going to get there. And the majority of people here do think the way we did. 
prior to January of 2019. We assumed... Actually, way past that. Actually. Yeah, we, <laughs> we assumed for all of our lives that Indian cinema was called Bollywood. Mm -hmm. We had no idea there was more than one industry, and we assumed everybody in India spoke Hindi. Yep. It's, it's an ignorance thing. Cause it's just ignorance. Hungarians speak some language. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Hungarian. Swedish speak Sweden. But, and the Italians speak Italian. Like I was yeah. saying before, it's, it's not common for us, especially with anything we see in the West, because we, it is opposite sides of the planet. And anything, you know, neighbors to India... We know that the Chinese speak Chinese, but most Americans just think about two versions of Chinese. That's all. Don't they speak Mandarin? They, they, yeah, Chinese they don't. Or? They don't. They don't. Under, the Japanese. What do they speak? Japanese. What do Germans speak? German. So what do the Irish speak? I don't know. Irish. Um, no, they speak English. They, <laughs> I know. I know. I it's being actually silly. called Gaelic. I know. Uh, oh, it's a Gaelic. Yeah, it is. Perfect. Uh, but yeah. it's just ignorance that everyone I've ever encountered, there isn't one person I've encountered over the last five years who had the same misconceptions we do born out of ignorance that when shown didn't go, oh, I didn't know that and changed it. <laughs> Nobody goes, oh, I'm calling it Hindi. It's funny. Uh, my film club. It was a while ago, if you saw our panel uh, discussion of RRR, when I made them all go see it in theaters, and they all loved it, obviously. But um, somebody had, and I had I'd, I'd shown them many Indian films, and I've talked to them about it, and the fact that there's different industries, and that this is not a Bollywood film. Right. And, and one of them, after the film, one of the friends asked, so how was that Bollywood film? Uh, film and he said ha, Bollywood that's not Bollywood <laughs> so you can teach people and they you can and then <laughs> they can teach other people and you know what else will help is when places like Netflix don't dub Ugh. to Lugu films with Hindi and make it the primary selection Ugh. on their platform or English or stupid talking. idiots yeah it's quite, that doesn't help quite infuriating when that happens yeah uh, anyways great panel uh, as always uh, let us know what other um panels, oh, give us interviews more. we should react to, and also for these four directors here and actors, what should be their next film? So we have a whole yeah. bunch of uh, Money Rottenham stuff to get to. Um, Basil Joseph, I think, is a very talented actor and uh, director. Agreed. Uh, Shetty as well. I know he has um, new films coming out. So for all of them, and, and that other one I told you, we will watch that, other, uh, that Tamil film. I can't pronounce the name of it. I've heard a lot of good stuff about it, though. Um, so I can't pronounce it either. Uh, let us know down below. Just...